Okay, so procrastination and um, how to overcome procrastination. Um, so, procrast one of the things to overcome procrast there's a, a few approaches I'd use to overcome procrastination. Also, procrastination <coughs> is also you handle procrastination differently at different levels of consciousness. So when one is, uh, when, if you, if you like, what I call a, a lower level of consciousness is a more inflated ego, bigger ego. So uh, as the ego gets bigger, i.e. has more repressed feelings and more thoughts, uh, then um, you can go into the idea that um, it's like, it, like, it gets, it, it has these ideas which it thinks will give it relief, yeah. So it's like, well, if you, if you had done a lot of work today, then you'd be happy, you know. And you're really, really bad because you haven't done a lot of work, so you're, you're bad. So, um, so at a certain level of consciousness, uh, you know, where you're in a lot of negativity, then the head will relentlessly go like you weren't productive enough and you should have done more work and you're a bad, bad boy, you know, for not, not doing more work. Um, now, if you're at a low level of consciousness and you want to do more work, there's two things I'd say uh, to be more productive. And one is be to take uh, lots of what I call uh, spiritually connecting breaks, okay, throughout the thing. Like I wrote my book, my book Bulletproof Peace, and uh, when I was doing that, I didn't, I didn't actually, you know, I quite enjoy not working. But, uh, but while I was doing the book, I would like take breaks, you know, like every like 20 minutes. I might take five minutes to meditate, uh, to go to the observer, just to connect with stillness. And then you feel recharged and you let go of all those self-negative thoughts. And then you can go for another 20 minutes or, or so and, and do not. So you, just, you get these breaks and they also tune you up to a higher level of vibration. So you, you get more inspired work when you're doing it. If you... Um, now I used to be, I used to work in the stock market and there it's like workerism. Mm. Now you, the thing with that, spirit, <coughs> workerism doesn't really work once you become a spiritual person because workerism, like when I was working in the stock market, you could do what I call adrenaline. You could live on adrenaline, which means that uh, when you live on adrenaline, you can, you can wake up early in the morning and you just push yourself you know, relentlessly, and then you get a kind of a buzz, which is like extreme adrenaline running through your system, and then you can work like a lunatic, you know, until late at night, and then go. But the, the problem with that is you can do that while you're living in the ego, or living in addiction, and I was in an active food addiction, so that adrenaline addiction goes well, but we know from a muscle testing of kinesiology, some of you know muscle testing kinesiology, which is like your muscles go weak when you do something that's not good for you. Um, that when you're doing workalism or you're in fear or any of the negative feelings, like you're, you're blowing up all your acupuncture meridian lines, all your chi lines are, are being blocked. Mm. So eventually you're going to go into burnout or a physical illness or get high blood pressure or do something. So you don't really want to push yourself with adrenal addiction. But if you take like lots of little meditation breaks and then do. The other thing to know is that um, when you get to higher levels of spirituality everything, there is no such thing as future outcomes. Yes, you're in the moment, you're in the present moment. So, so you do things out of inspiration but it's, it's not so much that you want to get a hit out of the outcome, you see. As <clears throat> The way the ego is wired up is to get a hit out of the outcome. You know, like uh, if I get if I get my MBA, then I'm going to get a massive high because I've achieved the big box. I've achieved the big tick box. You see, so you don't want to because remember uh, from you know like one of my spiritual teachers, Muji, who uh, who got this from Ramana Maharishi, who was an Indian sage, said that if you want something in your head, like you want something in the future, it sets up like a vibration within your ego that you, you want to get this. So this means you're going to, constantly going to be in a state of stress because you haven't got it. 
So you know, you're you're in a lack, you're in a lack vibration. Yes. You know, I can never be happy until I get my masters. Mm. So, so, so you have that vibration going through your ego, and then when you get the when you get the masters, then suddenly because you were chasing it, putting all that energy to get it, you get a short term high. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, but then you've inflated your ego, and then the ego will go for the next thing because it's not going to be enough, because you haven't got inner happiness. You're, you're buying your ego belief that of a future outcome will make you happy. That sets up for a more inflated ego. When you get it, you become addicted. You might become like a degree, addicted to degrees, you see. Like I know people have done like four degrees and they just probably spend their whole, because you get that high. You get the high when you get the thing. You know, I mean, I come from addiction backgrounds, you know. You like one donut is never enough. You have to have the next donut and the next donut, and it's still not enough. You see, so you don't want to set that up, but you do want to be productive. But you do, you want to cancel the thought that you can, you'll be happy when you you can only be happy if you achieve. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense? Yeah. So you want to be like taking meditation because happiness when you like meditate or go to the observer, you become peaceful, and then you do that. You want to do it more from the heart. From being like a, being productivity without the outcome, if that makes sense. I had, when I was doing my book, writing my book, I had to let go of those ego ideas. Like it has to be like a, you know, an important book or lots of people. It has to be a successful book because that would create stress in me as soon as, as soon as I did that. So I just had to let it all go. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Like if no one buys it ever, that's fine. You see, it's just I'm going to do it out of the joy. Of, of writing the book yes. mm -hmm. and if people get it you know they get it and if they don't get it and then I can and then I was in a more peaceful happy state I could I could work on the book but as soon as I got these things like outcomes like it has to be brilliant mm -hmm. people have to like it you know then you know I'd become more fearful and disconnected mm -hmm. you see mm -hmm. so so that's yes. the thing I would do with procrastinate like know that peace comes from within and it's, it's okay to be productive, but don't let these ideas come in into your head like, no, my worth comes from, you know, being very productive or on a big outcome. Because it's like, you know, if it's like if, if peace is within or, or the source is within or God's love is within, then that's guaranteed. It's an unconditional source. Mm -hmm. So it's only your ego is setting up like a, what we'd call like a punishing God. You know, it's like, oh, unless you do 300 things today and earn a million pounds by the end of the year, <coughs> otherwise you're worthless. So you want, you want to let that go. So that's like, and let go of self-attack as well. You want, to, you want to be like creating like out of joy, mm -hmm. creating out of joy, but not out of fear. Mm -hmm. uh, so know that... You see, the thing is, you want to go to the highest spiritual vibration you can to be the happiest, the highest level, and know that things will flow out of you. But uh, self, you know, self attack or trying to push yourself to be harder because you're not good enough is um, is actually detrimental to your long term productivity. So it's actually it, the ego thinks it's you know you might think that's helpful, like I should beat myself up a bit more. But it's actually cut, it just inflates the ego, and then you bu and then you burn out later on. <coughs> now, if you're in active addiction, you can do all the negative things, like you can eat donuts, you can smoke, you, know, you can take drugs and alcohol, and and you can do workerism. But you know, eventually you'll get your rock bottom. <coughs> and once you get into spirituality, you have to like remain in a place of spiritual connection to get work done. <clears throat> like, you know, the time for me, because it took me to near death, the time for me to do lots of donuts, lots of workerism, I can't do that any longer, mm -hmm. you know, because it would lead to death quite quickly. Mm -hmm. So you've got to like, you've got to be in a place of spiritual productivity as opposed to ego productivity, you know, fear and self-blame self and achievement. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very doable. And you've got to let go of uh, another, the other thing in the world. The world is collectively programming you all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, like, and, and for, for a man, <clears throat> like the male archetype is very much like money, achievement, and power. 
Mm. You know, that's like the, the, the prime, like self-worth for a man mm -hmm. is like how much have you achieved, how successful are you, how much money are you earning, you know, that's like the, the, the collective, that's the fear-based collective uh, archetype for the male model. You see, so you want to transcend that. You see, like my worth doesn't come from I'm super, super successful. You see, you really good. But then you think of like uh, you want to come from the heart. Okay, and 